Top view shows current flowing through the P-channel transistor in the upper left. A voltage signal entering the gate electrode turns on the complementary N-channel transistor, allowing charges to drain through. This opens the lower set of P-channel transistors so the current flows through them. In this way, electrical signals can rapidly propagate through a complex maze of switches. Designing these circuits requires software and hardware tools like computer-aided design and computer-aided engineering. After circuit designers complete each block of circuitry, the computer checks for accuracy based on geometrical and electrical design rules. A mask designer takes the circuit schematic and manually lays out the channels in each layer of the mask and generates a master blueprint. These drawings are usually four or five hundred times the actual size of the chip and enable engineers to visually check for errors. Exactly the same clock? So you come in, tap, and then... This information is electronically fed into a computer-controlled electron beam machine. In an ultra-clean environment, a fine electron beam will etch the patterns onto a series of chrome-plated glass plates. After the glass plates are etched, they become the masks that are used to transfer the circuit patterns onto the wafer. Each mask is inspected to ensure the patterns are good. The masks undergo a final wash in acids before they are carefully packaged. The following simplified sequence shows how masks are used to build transistors step by step. The first mask creates a well of doping so that the neighboring N-type and P-type substrates exist on the same wafer. The P and N channel regions are specified and electrically isolated by the growth of silicon dioxide. Next, the gate electrodes which turn the transistors on and off are formed. Masks number 4 and 5 define the source and drain regions of the N channel and P channel transistors. The next mask defines the contact holes which will enable the aluminum wiring used to interconnect the individual transistors to contact the source, drain, and gate region of each transistor. Most integrated circuits use from 12 to 25 masks depending on the complexity of the circuit and the type of process. And now, let's go into a research laboratory and follow a very simplified version of a CMOS fabrication process. From start to finish, a complex process may involve hundreds of individual operations and may take a number of weeks to complete. To have a successful run, control of contamination is extremely important. It takes just a few microscopic dust particles to drastically reduce the yield of effective semiconductor devices. The equipment, gases and chemicals that come in contact with the silicon wafers must also be of the highest purity and free of contamination. To start CMOS fabrication, P-type wafers